Hi, again, my name is Alberto Rodriguez. I'm an international student from uh, Mexico, and I'm studying my master's in public policy at the McCord School. And I mean, it has been a trip. I've learned a lot in this past year and a half. And not just for academics, but just learning from my, from my fellow um, students and people here at the Tax Center. But I've come along uh, with one truth above them all. And this is true from, for all of, the, uh, of all the citizens in the US. And this is that almost everybody hates going to the DMV. <laughs> I mean, this could be from a, lot of, uh, from a lot of reasons. It could be because you spend a lot of time, you sometimes go there and don't finish what you actually started, or just you didn't get the instructions, you were asked for information that you haven't uh, on, the, on the first time that you were looking for it. But these kinds of things actually re uh, represent how we have our relationship with our government. And that is why I'm actually working on delivering better policy outcomes. This is the name of our working group. And it's a working group that I've, that I've had the pleasure to, to start leading here uh, with, with a lot of people uh, from a lot of different places in the US. This is the, the statement that we're trying to focus on, is how can we get government leaders to ensure better policy outcomes for the people by creating the same policies with the same people to address their needs. It's basically how can we solve whatever you have on the DMV. But it also has a lot of impact on how can we get better, better <coughs> health care, or how can we treat uh, better uh, our veterans, or in this case, um, every veteran. <laughs> um, and what we're trying to do is basically build, uh, develop tools and encourage user-centered approach by <laughs> focusing on the policy leaders inside and outside of the government. And we're trying to focus on an idea that's called user-centered policy making. However, this might seem a little um, uh, out of the loop. It's a new format and it's a new idea, but it's based upon ideas that, that have already come up from the tech world. It's basically using human-centered design approaches and other, uh, other kinds of researches to put them in the policy center. So what we did uh, is going through a lot, of, uh, a lot of examples. So let me just give you two quick examples. This is a, this is a great example from Mobile Alabama. Uh, from Mobile Alabama. So the major team there actually started uh, trying to tackle blight, and which is uh, houses that are being abandoned. And as you may know, abandoned house, houses have uh, pol other policy implications like uh, crime reduction, crime um, levels going up. And what they did was actually redesign the whole approach on how do they treat whatever laws and procedures they have with their people and change it all again, but focusing on the users. So they came from uh, blood resolutions from 27% to 80% by just focusing on what the people needed. And this came from changing specific codes, but also de developing how to give uh, reports to the people. And, and instead of a, a little paper, they actually did bright, uh, big, uh, pink stickers in the house so that you can actually see the blight there and try to map the problem. Other example like this is the Code for America and Clear My Record. So they were trying to clear criminal records for past conditions of marijuana, and they uh, reduced that approach from several months to just five minutes. And all they did was actually uh, thinking about the user, and in this case, the user being the people that wanted to get their records up, but the impact was elsewhere. It's not the people that wanted their records cleared, it was how to help the government do that faster. And it's helping government workers automate what would otherwise be a cumbersome project. So stories like this, I've already gone into in 23 interviews with experts from inside and outside of the government and the digital policy field. And with fellow st student analysts, we did a little user-centered design approach. We came up with the, we actually signaled all the ideas that, 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 that this, uh, this um, user as well, and also, uh, uh, and well, the different ideas that the, that the people told us. And what we did is this. We basically changed uh, how we can actually see the public policy cycle. We have public policy schools all over, the, all over America, but we have started to, and we've been taught this classic model. And this classic model has been, it's a little outdated. And we took every part of this human-centered design approaches and see specifically what can we, what can we do to bring them into, this, into the century. It's like introducing research or including iteration in the policy formulation or also including piloting and scale-up when you implement a policy. 
we did this, and we are already coming with a with a with a definition of what, about what human-centered policy is, and it's basically intentionally design, implement, leveraging research, piloting, and iteration, and getting the user feedback so that we can actually address the needs of everybody in the policy process. It has been amazing, and I've been talking to a lot of people from, from different parts, from Code for America to New America to people in the government to people in nonprofits. But for me, it's also a, it has had a lot of impact because now I can use the techniques that I've learned here, such as human-centered design or policy research, and actually apply them to myself, trying to deliver better outcomes. So that's it. Thank you.